Hello, hello, welcome. Welcome to day 180 of our Bible in a Year Challenge. My name is Sandra. I'm going to be your host for today. Welcome. We are committed to reading our Bibles in a year with just less than 20 minutes daily read time. Yes, you heard me right. Just less than 20 minutes daily read time. Please kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok. We are excited to have you here. Let's get started. Day 180, June 29th, 2022. 365 days Bible reading. Old Testament, 1 Kings 22, verse 1 to 53. New Testament, Acts 19, 14 to 41. Psalms and Proverbs, Proverbs 15, 31 to 33. And Proverbs 16, 1 to 7. Old Testament, NIV version. 1 Kings 22, 1 to 53. Micaiah <clears throat> prophesies against Ahab. For three years there was no war between Aram and Israel, but in the third year Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, went down to see the king of Israel. The king of Israel had said to his officials, Don't you know that Ramoth Gilead belongs to us, and yet we are doing nothing to retake it from the king of Aram? So he asked Jehoshaphat, Will you go with me to fight against Ramoth Gilead? Jehoshaphat replied to the king of Israel, I am as you are, my people as your people, my horses as your horses. But Jehoshaphat also said to the king of Israel, first seek the counsel of the Lord. So the king of Israel brought together the prophets, about 400 men, and asked them, Shall I go to war against Ramoth Gilead, or shall I refrain? Go, they answered, for the Lord will give it into the hand into the king's hands. But Jehoshaphat asked, Is there no longer a prophet of the Lord here whom we can inquire of? The king of Israel answered Jehoshaphat, There is still one prophet through whom we can inquire of the Lord. But I hate him because he never prophesies anything good about me, but always bad. He is Micaiah, son of Imla. The king should not say such a thing. Jehoshaphat replied. So the king of Israel called one of his officials and said, Bring Micaiah, son of Imla, at once, dressed in their royal robes. The king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, were sitting on their thrones at the threshing floor by the entrance of the gate of Samaria, with all the prophets prophesying before them. Now Zedekiah, son of Kenana, had made iron horns, and he declared, This is what the Lord says. With this, you will gore the Arameans until they are destroyed. All the other prophets were prophesying the same thing. Attack Ramoth Gilead and be victorious, they said, for the Lord will give it into the king's hands. The messenger who had gone to summon Micaiah said to him, Look, the other prophets, without exception, are predicting success for the king. Let your word agree with theirs and speak favorably. But Micaiah said, As surely as the Lord lives, I can tell him only what the Lord tells me. When he arrived, the king asked him, Micaiah, shall we go to war against Ramoth Gilead or not? Attack and be victorious, he answered. For the Lord will give it into the king's hand. The king said to him, how many times must I make you swear to tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? Then Micaiah answered, I saw all Israel scattered on the hills like sheep without a shepherd. And the Lord said, These people have no master. Let each one go home in peace. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Didn't I tell you that he never prophesied anything good about me, but only bad? Micaiah continued, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne with all the multitudes of heaven standing around him on his right and on his left. And the Lord said, Who will entice Ahab into attacking Ramoth Gilead and going to his death there? One suggested this and another that. Finally, a spirit came forward, stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. By what means, the Lord asked, I will go out and be a deceiving spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. He said, you will succeed in enticing him 
said the Lord, go and do it. So now the Lord has put a deceiving spirit in the mouth of all these prophets of yours. The Lord has decreed disaster for you. Then Zedekiah, son of Kenana, went up and slapped Micaiah in the face. Which way did the spirit from the Lord go when he went from me to speak to you? He asked. Micaiah replied, you will find out on the day you go to hide in an inner room. The king of Israel then ordered, take Micaiah and send him back to Ammon, the ruler of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, and say, this is what the king says, put this fellow in prison and give him nothing but bread and water until I return safely. Micaiah declared, if you ever return safely, the Lord has not spoken through me. Then he added, mark my words, all you people. Ahab killed at Ramoth Gilead. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat king of Judah went up to Ramoth Gilead. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, I will enter the battle in disguise, but you wear your royal robe. So the king of Israel disguised himself and went into battle. Now the king of Aram had ordered his 32 chariot commanders, do not fight with anyone small or great except the king of Israel. When the chariot commanders saw Jehoshaphat, they thought, surely this is the king of Israel. So they turned to attack him. But when Jehoshaphat cried out, the chariot commanders saw that he was not the king of Israel and stopped pursuing him. But someone drew his bow at random and hit the king of Israel between the sections of his armor. The king told his chariot driver, wheel around and get me out of the fighting. I have been wounded. All day long, the battle raged, and the king was propped up in his chariot facing the Arameans. The blood from his wound ran onto the floor of the chariot, and that evening he died. As the sun was setting, a cry spread through the army, every man to his town, every man to his land. So the king died and was brought to Samaria, and they buried him there. They washed the chariot at a pool in Samaria, where the prostitutes bathed, and the dogs licked up his blood, as the word of the Lord had declared. As for the other events of Ahab's reign, including all he did, the palace he built, and adorned with ivory and the cities he fortified are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel? Ahab rested with his ancestors and Ahaziah his son succeeded him as king. Jehoshaphat king of Judah Jehoshaphat son of Asa became king of Judah in the fourth year of Ahab king of Israel. Jehoshaphat was 35 years old when he became king and he reigned in Jerusalem 25 years. His mother's name was Azuba, daughter of Shilhi. In everything he followed the ways of his father Asa and did not stray from them. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. The high places, however, were not removed and the people continued to offer sacrifices and burn incense there. Jehoshaphat was also at peace with the king of Israel. As for the other events of Jehoshaphat's reign, the things he achieved and his military exploits, are they not written in the books of the annals of the kings of Judah? He read the land of the rest of the male shrine prostitutes who remained there even after the reign of his father Asa. There was then no king in Edom, a provincial governor ruled. Now Jehoshaphat built a fleet of trading ships to go to Ophir for gold, but they never set sail. They were wrecked at Ezion Geber. At that time, Ahaziah, son of Ahab, said to Jehoshaphat, Let my men sail with yours. But Jehoshaphat refused. Then Jehoshaphat rested with his ancestors and was buried with them in the city of David, his father, and Jehoram, his son, succeeded him as king. Ahaziah, king of Israel. Ahaziah said, Ahaziah, son of Ahab, became king of Israel in Samaria in the 17th year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and he reigned over Israel two years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord because he followed the ways of his father, and mother and of Jeroboam son of Nebat who caused Israel to sin. He served and worshipped Baal and aroused the anger of the Lord the God of Israel just as his father had done. 
New Testament NIV version Acts 19 14 to 41. Seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. One day, the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, and Paul I know about, but who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. When this became known to the Jews and Greeks living in Ephesus, they were all seized with fear and the name of the Lord Jesus was held in high honor. Many of those who believed now came and openly confessed what they had done. A number who had practiced sorcery brought their scrolls together and burned them publicly. When they calculated the value of the scrolls, the total came to 50,000 drachmas. In this way, the words of the Lord spread widely and grew in power. After all this had happened, Paul decided to go to Jerusalem, passing through Macedonia and Achai. After I have been there, he said, I must visit Rome also. He sent two of his helpers timothy and erastus to macedonia while he stayed in the province of asia a little longer the riot in ephesus about that time there arose a great disturbance about the way a silversmith named demetrius who had who made silver shrines of artemis brought in a lot of business for the craftsmen there he called them together along with the workers in related trades and said you know my friends that we receive a good income from this business and you see and hear how this fellow paul has convinced and led astray large numbers of people here in ephesus and in practically the whole province of asia he says that gods made by human hands are no gods at all there is danger not only that our trade will lose its good name but also that the temple of the great goddess Artemis will be discredited and the goddess herself who is worshipped throughout the province of Asia and the world will be robbed of her divine majesty. When they heard this, they were furious and began shouting, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. Soon the whole city was in an uproar. The people seized Gaius and Aristarchus. Paul's traveling companions from Macedonia, and all of them rushed into the theater together. Paul wanted to appear before the crowd, but the disciples would not let him. Even some of the officials of the province, friends of Paul, sent him a message begging him not to venture into the theater. The assembly was in confusion. Some were shouting one thing, some another. Most of the people did not even know why they were there. The Jews in the crowd pushed Alexander to the front and they shouted instructions to him. He motioned for silence in order to make a defense before the people. But when they realized he was a Jew, they all shouted in unison for about two hours. Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. The city clerk quieted the people, the crowd and said, fellow Ephesians, doesn't all the world know that the city of Ephesus is the guardian of the temple of the great Artemis and of her image which fell from heaven? Therefore, since these facts are undeniable, you ought to calm down and not do anything rash. You have brought these men here, though they have neither robbed temples nor blasphemed our goddess. If then Demetrius and his fellow craftsmen have a grievance against anybody, the courts are open and there are proconsuls. They can press charges. If there is anything further you want to bring up, it must be settled in a legal assembly. As it is, we are in danger of being charged with rioting because of what happened today. In that case, we would not be able to account for this commotion since there is no reason for it. After he has said this, he dismissed the assembly. Psalms and Proverbs, Proverbs 15, 31 to 33. Whoever heeds life giving correction will be at home among the wise. Those who disregard discipline despise themselves, but the one who heeds correction gains understanding. Wisdom's instruction is to fear the Lord and humility comes before honor. Proverbs 16, 1 to 7. To humans, 
belong the plans of the heart, but from the Lord comes the proper answer of the tongue. All a person's ways seems pure to them, but motives are weighed by the Lord. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. The Lord works out everything to its proper end, even the wicked for a day of disaster. The Lord detests all the proud of heart. Be sure of this. They will not go unpunished. Through love and faithfulness, sin is atoned for. Through the fear of the Lord, evil is avoided. When the Lord takes pleasure in anyone's way, he causes their enemies to make peace with them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. I hope you were blessed with today's readings. I was really blessed myself. Please, if you are here and you would like to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, it will be my utmost pleasure to lead you in this prayer of salvation. Please repeat after me every word you say, believing in your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations. If you said that prayer, we are so excited to welcome you into God's family. Kindly go ahead, send us an email to salvationinchrist101 at gmail.com. Let us know you gave your heart to Christ. Someone is going to reach out to you and pray with you and help you in your new faith walk. Again, the email is salvationinchrist101 at gmail.com. God bless you. Please remember to follow us on all our social media platforms. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok. I look forward to another amazing day tomorrow with you. Have a blessed day today. Remember to share this video with your friends, family, and loved ones. And remember, God loves you. Hallelujah. Amen. I love you. Bye.